of like baseball games when the, the players get to um, you know, pick their entry music. I didn't get to pick mine, but uh, thanks for the applause. Um, I don't have anything as exciting as talking about movies or things like that. This is a little more boring side, but it's hopefully it's important to you as well. So I'm Edwin Lee, and two things you need to know about me. One is I love to play golf, so it's killing me to be inside instead of out there right now. Um, I loved it so much, I actually competed all the way through my college days at Stanford. So next question is, no, I wasn't there when Tiger was there. And the ne next question is, I have no idea what's up with this game, so don't ask me. But if you're looking for a playing partner, let me know. The second thing is, um, is I love technology. Um, again, not technology for technology's sake. My whole career has been kind of implementing technology. The intersection of people, technology, and business process to really kind of uh, drive, drive technology and make it the most useful as possible. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, organizing for a programmatic success. So let's, okay. So you've heard uh, some of the case studies earlier today. Uh, you heard Billy at Intel talk about a little bit more, um, you know, the second film she had to prove, um, you know, what sales were driven. So more accountability, right? Efficiency and accountability. I believe that automation and programmatic channels uh, are meeting this demand or helping this out, right? And really, so the need for tools and technology is absolutely critical. I don't think anybody would argue with that. So a recent survey done by um, WBR, you know, said that um, brand marketers, there was a survey of brand marketers and saying, what is programmatic or automated channels um, doing for you? It's helping drive direct revenue. Improves understanding of digital ROI. And it helps it more, be more accountable. If you want to copy the survey, I think it's, we're publishing it, or it's going to be published in the next week or so. If you want to find out more about that. So with programmatic channels, it, you know, accountability is just one benefit, right? Here's some others that you may know of, but uh, you know, I'll just go through them really quickly. Cherry pick your consumers. You know, I think we saw the, the Constellation Brands case study, you know, talking with the, what, who their customers are, what do they want, and really kind of cherry picking who they want to talk to, right? So programmatic can, can activate that. Activating the data, right? We talked about kind of that first party and third party data combination um, to really kind of activate that data. Greater reach, you can buy across thousands and thousands of sites rather than just those direct buys in five to 10, right? And it creates ability to track digital ROI. I kind of talked about that one already. And optimization across the entire marketing program. So not only customer acquisition, retention, uh, remarketing, you want to optimize across those, um, you know, the entire full funnel. So let's talk about four models of organizing for programmatic success. So the first one is manage it yourself. It's difficult, right? Um, but the brand sign up with a tech platform, form a team, basically form your own trading desk with inside your brand. Works well. Second one, use an agency and their tech platform. So many agencies have formulated their own trading desk and they have their own technology. Works very well. Some of the cons there could be um, you don't know what the optimizations that you're driving uh, the sales with. So a little bit lack of transparency. Third one is tech technology partner management. And this one is more about use one vendor for remarketing use two vendors for customer acquisition. So it's a little bit of siloed, um, but you're, 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 driving, you're driving the sales, right? And last one that we'll talk a little bit more about is agency partner management of tech platform. So that we call this the triumvirate kind of circle, where the brand licenses the tech platform, so they know exactly how much they're paying, they have the transparency of the data, um, they have their agency run the, run the campaign, the agency brings their expertise in media planning, you can see kind of the, the media across the board, and really kind of it's all aligned for the brand and brand success. Okay, let me go into uh, the case study. So here's a case study where MediaMath, Square One, or SQ1, and a, a large retailer um, kind of aligned in this manner. So the large retailer actually had a direct contract with MediaMath. 
so they know exactly how much their fees are with us. They actually get the data back of all the, the impressions that we delivered. Square One brought their knowledge of the retailer and kind of what their uh, marketing success means and devised this campaign. So the campaign was, instead of doing FSI print inserts for this retailer, they took a bunch of markets and devised a display program. So this display program was targeted um, at their, their CRM clients around certain stores. And the, the measurement was offline or brick and mortar store sales. They also did other market testing with direct buys instead of programmatic. And then it held a couple other markets dark for uh, incrementality. So you can see the results there, right? Five to one ROI for offline sales. Pretty darn good. 74% higher uh, ROI through, through the programmatic channels than the direct buy campaigns. And a 38% higher ad viewability than the, the direct buys. So pretty, good, pretty darn good. So again, you know, the, these three companies came together for the retailer and brand success and kind of measured it all through. So just to leave you with a couple thoughts as you are brand marketers in the agencies, um, we're seeing these two models as kind of driving the most value for the brands. The brands really going all in with programmatic licensing the tech platform, hiring people to run it. It's working very well at, at, at uh, many of the companies that we work with. And then I just highlighted the, the triumvirate as well, where the brand licenses the tech platform, but hires their agency to actually bring their expertise and actually operate the campaigns um, in conjunction with all their other direct buys. So take away this and ask the questions for yourselves, like what's, what's going on out there? How do we organize for success? especially with the programmatic technologies and the processes out there. And I've got three minutes left. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. The two uh, uh, models that you see the most often are the triumvirate model with the three parties and then the direct model. It seems to me that a clear problem with the sort of triumvirate model is just the potential for a lot of miscommunication in terms of objectives, in terms of results, all of that. Is this something that you see a lot of? And then I guess my follow-up to that is, what would you say is, is a potential failure of that direct relationship? So I think, so in the first question where you think that there could be some communication problems, mm -hmm. it's really the agency that's that's, tie, that's the glue that's tying this all together, right? Mm -hmm. It's really the, the relationship between the brand and the tech platform. Yes, there's a, I don't know, consultative kind of how do we use our tech, the, this technology, but really it's, it's the agency's expertise that is leveraging the technology. I think that line between the brand and the tech platform is more about um, uh, the licensing of the platform so that they know, again, you know, they get the data from the tech platform and the insights as well as the, the cost transparency. Mm -hmm. What was the second one? Uh, so in terms of that direct relationship, is there any like uh, uh, shortcoming that you could point to? Yeah, I, I think it, it's, it's a longer ramp time, right? Um, it's easy, much easier to activate um, uh, an agency and running, running technology versus yourself, right? You have to not only license the technology, but then you have to have people to run it. Um, and hi, so you have to hire people or you know, find somebody to run the, run the campaigns and bring that expertise to the table. So it takes a lot, lot longer to get, it, get up and running. All right. Sorry, it's hard to be <laughs> right. Uh, is there a system for transitioning from the in-house to the triad system? Transitioning from one to the other? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of the agencies these days are becoming, you know, technology experts. So they, if, if they don't have a technology expert as part of their team, you may want to ask that because they, they probably have that expertise in-house. Um, from managing yourself to an agency, is that the direction? Um, we haven't seen that too much. Um, to tell the truth, I've, I've seen it more happen the other way, um, but 
so I, I don't have a lot of information there for you, but I'd love to talk to you more about that, see if, see if we can uncover something. Any other questions? Oh, one last one. Oh, okay. But Edwin's around, right? I'm You're around. Gonna, I'll be around all day. Okay, yep. great. So you can Thank find you. him later. Thank you so much, Edwin.